Hi, I'm Sherry McGill, and you're watching Lessons Learned. How should we manage our scraps? Once we have a project done, what do we do with the scraps? Well, I'm going to take you from start to finish on a project that I recently did. It was these set of six southwestern style placemats and I had left over a lot of this fabric. Not a lot lot but some pretty good scraps and then these sections that I did uh, they actually had enough uh, yardage left to put into my bins that I have by color. So here's what I do when I start a project. I get a bin and I have a lot of these bins. These are like the scrapbook bins that you get at Michael's but they're deeper. They're about twice as deep. They say they're 12 by 12 but they're obviously not. They're 12 this way but they're just a little bit wider this way. So you can put a quilting project in here pretty easy. So I keep that project in this box from beginning to end. So now I'm at the end of this placement project and this is what I have left. So how do I process this? Do I just throw it in my scrap bin as is? It's not really, a, there's not probably a fat quarter in there. It's just a lot of strips and some of which I, you know, after I quilted the placemats, I tore the batting off and just saved the, the strip of extra fabric that I had leave, uh, left on the edges. So let's see what I have here and see what I can do about processing this. Now normally I do keep a bin of two and a half inch uh, strips, like jelly roll strips. As a matter of fact, there's some leftover jelly roll strips in here. Jelly rolls, to buy a jelly roll is not my favorite thing to do. I think it cause a, causes a lot of excess fabric that you can't use as easily. And now I do like charm squares and layer cakes because you usually end up using most of that fabric, but jelly rolls tend to, for me, they leave a lot of extra. But some of this is end of project pieces as well. So I have this bin that I keep those in. Here's a bin I have of squares, and there's some varying sizes of squares. So the majority is like a few leftover charm pack pieces, and then I cut a lot of five by five squares for projects. I have some four inch, and I have some five, six, um, eight, and ten in here. Not too many, but I don't really get too many of those, but I do have uh, plenty of uh, five inch pieces left over a lot so those go in here and then like I said four inch and then I also have three inch and two inch so this these will make like a good postage stamp quilt or something like that um, I also have my normal bins that you have probably seen in a prior video that I arrange by color and these are bigger pieces or pieces that I bought uh, like in a bundle and so I keep them by color, like on this one I have orange, coral, and peach, and these all go in a cubby. And I have uh, a set of uh, 12 of those. So that's where most of that goes. And then I also have a scrap bin that's pretty big. And at the moment, I do have it organized a little bit, and I need to go through and process some of this, too. If I don't get right to doing it right after a project, it goes in here. I also have a very skinny, tiny, teeny tiny pieces. Uh, these are things that I would rather throw away, but I just can't get myself to do it. So, um, yeah, I think everybody's got one of these. And then I also have my bin here under my cutting table that is strictly for scrap quilting. So this is where I have my ongoing scrapping going on. 
like there's a piece I've scrapped together. I've done some of these on the adding machine tape. I have uh, my big piece that I'm adding to. This is a big chunk. And then I have some favorite pieces that I've put down in there that I want to use with this. So between the big basket and this, we get our squares that are, mm, I would say, odd sizes. Like they're little strips or something that doesn't cut into a square or a two and a half inch strip. And then here we are at the end of this project with these pieces. So let's see what I can do with them. Well, here's a piece of leftover binding. I can stick that in my scrap quilting box right now. And then it looks like I have a lot of two and a half inch strips here. So let's, let's see what I can get out of them. Get my ruler and my cutter and let's see what we have here so this looks like a I'm trying to see if there's a straight edge because usually the, at some point in the project you know you've gotten a straight edge there somewhere so this looks like a straight edge I'm just going to go ahead and fold that since it's a little longer than my ruler and yes I am going to use my ruler to measure with for the two and a half and yes we are going to get a two and a half out of that easily so there's one that I can put in my jolly jelly roll basket this little piece right here that's going to go in the tiny basket of the tiny pieces and it looks like I may have another one of those let's see here fold that over put it on the straight oops two and a half and you could go back and make two and a half inch squares out of these, of course, if I wanted to keep a collection of those. And then this one goes in the tiny bin. And let's see, here is another one by itself. Let's see if we got two and a half here. I've got exactly two and a half. With just a little tiny sliver left, this sliver is going in the trash. And I keep a trash can by my sewing machine and a trash can by my cutting uh, table here. There's another one of these. have some leftover binding and I have another um, place that I put my leftover binding separate I don't have that bin out here but this is enough that I could actually use for something that's what I had left over this is about an inch and a half I don't think I'll cut it an inch and a half squares I don't have that size so I think I'll put this in the big scrap bin or maybe in the scrap, uh, the scrap quilting bin. Let's see. This looks like it might just be two and a half. Not quite. I think I'll put that in the scrap quilting bin too. Here's another piece of binding. I can keep that with the other and connect them if I need to. Uh, this one is another uh, scrap scrap quilt bin. I'm just going to pull that scrap back, bin back out. And this one might be two and a half. Yep, 
Yes, just barely going to make it. Here's some I know that we can use for two and a half inch strips. As a matter of fact, I think this one can just kind of sit right on top of it. And we'll cut it all at the same time. That might be big enough to put in the teeny tiny. More two and a half inch strips. This one looks to be three. I'm going to set this aside. This one can go in this, the scrap quilting bin. This one looks like two and a half. It really saves a lot of effort to go ahead and do this now instead of waiting. Not that I don't have a pile that's waiting somewhere because I surely do. Another two and a half inch strip. Uh, this little strip we can put in the, mm, I guess we can put that in the scrap quilting. This one's about a one and a half. We can do that in the scrap quilting. This one, not quite two and a half. It's more like two and a quarter. Both of these. So I think I will put those in the big scrap basket. Here's a big piece. We'll deal with that in a minute. And look, here's looks like maybe another two and a half. Actually, that looks like exactly a two and a half. Let's see how it measures. Yeah, that'll work. That one will work for a two and a half inch strip. Maybe this one too. Nope, not quite. That one's a little over two big scrap bin. Okay, there's another fat one I'm going to deal with here in a second. And then I have two pieces that are decent size. As a matter of fact, that looks like it could be a fat quarter. So I think I'll put this in my green and teal bin. And I'm going to fold it like a fat quarter should be folded, which is, this is the way I do it. Fold it in half long ways, and then long ways again. And then fold it in towards the center, in towards the center again, and then fold it. That is a fat quarter. So that will go in the, the green bin, like the one I had for the orange coral and peach that I showed you. And then here's another pretty good sized scrap. And that looks like, let's see, let's measure it. It's almost 10 inches by 20. 10 inches by 20. So I could probably do safely two 8 inch squares. Let's do that. Let's do two eight-inch squares. Because otherwise, I, I will never find this piece again. Unless I put it with that fat quarter, which I could. But let's just uh, cut some pieces here so that we can get a variety of this particular fabric. That goes in the trash. 
And let's see. We want 8 over. So let's see here. Okay, so that's going to be on that line right there. Yeah, I'm using my lines on my mat. That's okay. Alright, so now I have another little piece here I can deal with. And then I'm going to take these edges and measure over eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And feel free to make them in halves as well. You know, six and a half, eight and a half. I'm going to stick that in the eight section here. Right there. And then let's see what else we have. Well, this wound up being a scrap quilting bin piece. And so did that one. And then now we have just these pieces right here. Let's see if we've got some that are about the same. We can cut them on top of each other. Could probably do those in two and a half. Let's see what these are. Three and a half. And this one, the most it is, is three. So I could possibly do some three inch squares of this but I think I'm just going to do a two and a half out of this and and let it go. Let it go with that. And this, uh, you know, this method's not hard and, hard and fast. This is just what I do and based on what size pieces I like to use. This can go in the tiny scraps. And then I'll put these two in the jelly rolls. Now, that only leaves me with two pieces. So, this is kind of a nice piece here. What is it? four inches. I could get two four inch squares out of that. Pretty sure. I'm going to pitch that. Now I'll put it in the tiny scraps. Cut this in half and we'll be good to go. Two four inch squares. I will stick that right there on the four inch squares. I don't know where this scrap came from. I'll stick it in the tiny scraps. And that leaves us with one more. And I could probably do some more four inch. Maybe a couple. edges aren't quite the same everywhere here so let me just get these squared up oops I 
these little edges that I'm squaring up and cutting off I'm just throwing away because they're just tiny little pieces okay so there's two more four inch and then these could be these could be three let's do that just lining up two straight edges I folded it but I'm lining up those edges putting my ruler on the edge that I lined up at three this can go in the tiny bin and then I can cut these into three inch squares or this into three inch squares it's one piece see how many I get one two three four five and I'm left with this little thing for my tiny bin one two three four five three inch squares and that was in my little bucket here let me just stack them on top of each other really good so there we go all that fabric is put away in a neat and organized way so i can put my bins back where they go and i'm done and the good news is, is now I have an empty bin for a new project. All right, I hope this helped you, and I'll see you soon. Bye.